Claudette Colbert was sitting by her husband's deathbed when she received an utterly chilling letter. In the message, her friend Verna Hall made a disturbing accusation, one that would haunt her husband's final days. But we will touch more on this later on. Born on September 13th, 1903, she lived the first part of her beautiful life in Paris. However, at the age of six, the family quickly moved to New York, where she found her first big break with many Broadway shows. Claudette Colbert's whole career was a surprise. Colbert never wanted to be a movie star. Even so, Hollywood wanted her. Tinseltown was just switching from silent films to talkies, and there was a huge demand for actresses who had experience with speaking roles. They eventually enticed her to go to the West. Colbert's first experience on a film set was so awful, she swore she would never do it again. Her first movie was 1927's For the Love of Mike under soon-to-be legendary director Frank Capra. But this didn't help much at the time. In the 1920s, Capra was still young and green, and Colbert just didn't trust him. She only stayed in Hollywood because she was locked in a contract. In 1934, Colbert worked with Frank Capra, again in the now classic It Happened One Night, playing spoiled heiress Ellie Andrews. But most people didn't know the film's dark history. After their previous collaboration, Capra and Colbert had no love lost for each other, and Colbert wasn't even supposed to get the part. She was Capra's last choice after seven other starlets turned him down, perhaps hearing that she was the bottom of the barrel choice for the part in It Happened One Night, Colbert made sure to put her most diva demands before she committed to the role. She insisted not only on getting twice her salary for the film, she also finagled a shorter filming schedule so she wouldn't have to cancel her vacation plans. Now she was surprisingly getting her own way in the film industry. To everyone's surprise, almost no one knew about Colbert and Capra filming It Happened One Night was an absolute nightmare. Capra recalled that his lead actress had many little tantrums about almost anything, mostly he said motivated by her antipathy towards me. But her biggest diva moment happened in the film's most famous scene. When it came time to film the scene in It Happened One Night, where Ellie Andrews hikes up her skirt and flashes a scandalous bare leg to hitch a ride with a passing driver, Colbert put her foot down, literally. She initially refused to do the scene, calling the iconic ankle strip unladylike. To get her to do it though, Capra had to resort to desperate measures. About ready to give up on his starlet to do the scene, Capra brought in her body double, a chorus girl who was a Hollywood hopeful. Well, never underestimate what jealousy can do for you. When Colbert caught sight of the girl who was about to steal her scene, she immediately changed her tune, saying, Get out of here, I'll do it, that's not my leg. Colbert was always exacting and deeply insecure. This is not a good combination, and she went to extreme lengths to control her image. It became a cliche for people to claim they had a good side, but Colbert actually refused to show the right side of her face to the camera entirely. This eccentricity soon blew up into epic proportions. Colbert was deeply suspicious that the cameraman wouldn't meet her demands and they'd end up shooting her bad side. So she took matters into her own hands. Not only did she start learning about lighting and the technical side of film, she would often force producers to redesign film sets just to accommodate her specific needs. Colbert's mother, Jean, made Mommy Dearest look tame. The overbearing and overprotective Jean doted on her famous daughter and coddled her well into adulthood. 
Jean even insisted on living in the same house as Claudette in Los Angeles. Colbert didn't seem to mind until the day Jean outdid herself in the worst way imaginable. Around 1928, Colbert met and soon married her first husband, Norman Foster. Well, Colbert may have been in love, but her mother Jean most certainly was not. Her mother reportedly banned Foster from her presence and wouldn't even allow Claudette's own husband to set foot in the home. And that wasn't all, no, the drama kept on going between the three. Jean banning Norman Foster from her house isn't a good look at all, but the matriarch didn't even know that he and Claudette were married. For one reason or another, Colbert had kept everything about the romance from her mother for fear that Jean would simply blow up. Which, to be fair, she probably would, but it gets even worse than that. Thanks to Mama Jean's controlling behavior, Colbert and Foster never lived together. They were married for a whopping seven years, all while living in separate houses. Colbert kept their love a secret all the while and never managed to get out from her mother's thumb. Colbert's first academic award nomination came in 1935, when she was up for the Best Actress Trophy for It Happened One Night. But her moment was tainted from the very beginning. Betty Davis famously snuck into the nominations as a write-in vote after outraged viewers protested her Oscar snub. Colbert did not take this well at all. Colbert was simply never full of confidence, and this last-minute inclusion of Davis rattled her worst insecurities. Colbert was utterly intimidated, and sure she'd never win in the face of Davis's overwhelming popularity. So instead of attending the award ceremony and face a loss in person, she went on a cross-country rail trip. However, this totally backfired for the girl. That evening, Colbert's film It Happened One Night swept the awards. It won Best Picture, Best Director, Best Screenplay, Best Actor, and you guessed it, Best Actress. But she was nowhere to be found in the audience. Studio head Harry Cohn was furious, but the scandal just continued. At the moment that her name was announced as the recipient of the Best Actress Oscar, Colbert was about to depart on her cross-country rail trip. Cone dispatched someone to find her at all costs, and they managed to catch up to her just before she stepped on the train. The gopher whisked the actress from the station directly to the awards ceremony to accept her Oscar. Before Elizabeth Taylor, there was Claudette Colbert. In 1934, Colbert took on the iconic role of Cleopatra in Sissel's film of the same name. But behind the scenes, Colbert was absolutely miserable. While making Cleopatra, Colbert was recovering from appendicitis, and it nearly turned fatal. The elaborate, heavy costumes and lengthy days on set made it difficult for her to even stand for more than a few minutes at a time, which is not good when you're the title character of a film. In the end, it did all pay off though. The film got a Best Picture nomination in the upcoming Oscars. While many urged Colbert to pursue a career on stage, she had other ideas in mind. Colbert was passionate about fashion design and worked in retail in order to pay for design classes at the Art Student League of New York. However, when Colbert was an art student, she experienced a lucky twist of fate. Although she had been pulled between fashion and the stage since her high school days, she happened to meet a playwright at a party in college. From there, she ended up making her Broadway debut at the age of 20. Colbert soon signed a contract with legendary Broadway producer Al Woods. And then though, the hard part started. 
Broadway producers kept casting her in film maid roles, and Colbert despised being that French girl. Colbert and husband Norman Foster's seven-year marriage ended predictably, but no less tragically in a bitter split. After years of keeping everything hush-hush and tiptoeing around her family, the pressure became too much. In the grand old Hollywood tradition, the two desperate actors got a quick divorce in Mexico in 1935. Though Colbert became famous for playing in Cleopatra, she actually nabbed a much darker role two years earlier. The movie was the sign of the cross, and it was a turning point in Colbert's career, taking her from undervalued studio grunt to A-list star, but behind the scenes she lived in fear. Her co-star in The Sign of the Cross, Frederick March, continually took advantage of her on set. Colbert later called him the worst womanizer I ever knew. But don't worry, she got her revenge after all. One day, March brazenly decided to harass Colbert in plain sight during a photo shoot for the film basically touching her rear end in front of everyone. When the photos were published, a furious Colbert went straight to Paramount Studios. As a result, she became the first star to get approval of photos of herself before they were published, a practice that is still common to this very day. When the filming wrapped on It Happened One Night, Colbert was certain she had just been in a stinker. After completing her scenes, she told a friend that she'd just finished the worst film she ever made. Of course though, that's not quite what happened. The movie It Happened One Night was now a classic. The disaster film somehow turned into a miracle. However, this wasn't the only beneficial thing that happened to her during that time. In 1936, Colbert became the highest paid actress in Hollywood, and by 1938, she was the highest paid performer, period. So in the end, a string of movie hits like It Happened One Night will do that for an actress. It was obvious that Colbert's family didn't really like her first husband, Norman Foster, and their hatred actually allowed her to meet her second husband. At a family dinner, Colbert's brother punched Foster, breaking his nose. Luckily, Colbert then took her man to see a hunky surgeon named Jack Pressman. Colbert and Pressman stayed in contact, and when the timing was right, they got together. Just four months after her divorce from Foster, Colbert was standing at the altar with Pressman. But even this came with a price. After the disaster of her first marriage, Colbert was finally kicked out of her mother's house. As it turns out, this made for a much happier union, and the pair were together until Pressman's passing. But that doesn't mean it was without scandal. According to rumors, Colbert had dalliances during her marriage to Pressman, except that's not the scandalous part. Tabloids claimed that instead of having affairs with male co-stars, Colbert was a closeted lesbian, carrying on secret trysts with other stars. Her most famous posed lover, the beautiful Marlene Diedrich. However, nothing could be further from the truth. Colbert likely wasn't carrying on with Diedrich because the two women simply hated each other. There's a famous photo of them snuggled together at a party, but Colbert claimed someone pushed her up to Diedrich against her will to get the shot. Additionally, there's also one little fact that Diedrich once called Colbert ugly and so shop girl French. So, it is safe to say this rumor couldn't have been true. By 1950, Colbert was aging out of romantic lead roles, but she wanted to hold on to her status, and she began to take dangerous risks. While filming the drama Three Came Home, she shook off her usual glamour and played a woman interned at a POW camp. 
Colbert even allowed them to film her bad side. But her dedication forced her to go way too far. For one violent scene, Colbert sent her stunt woman home and insisted on performing it herself only to wind up in the hospital with a cracked vertebrae and a ruptured disc. This had a devastating consequence. The injuries forced her to give up the lead in All About Eve, and the film went to Betty Davis, her one-time Oscar rival, and became one of the greatest films of all time. Injured and aging, Claudette Colbert started to slow down in the 1950s. But when one door closes, another one opens. So in 1958, she met the wealthy Verna Hall and started passing the hours away from her busy husband with her fancy new companion. But their close friendship would eventually show a disturbing dark side. For 10 years, Colbert and Hull were inseparable, and they would frequently attend various shows and galleries together. Yet this intimacy came with a price. These two soon reignited the rumors that Colbert was having an affair with Hull, even though both women did deny their involvement. But in 1968, things got even more complicated. In the late 60s, Hull and Colbert's scandalous friendship came to a sinister end. That year, Colbert's husband, Jack, was on his deathbed, suffering brutally from liver cancer. Naturally, Colbert expected her buddy Hull to be her rock during this difficult time to help support her. That's though not exactly what Hull ended up doing. Despite her hefty riders, Colbert was usually a professional on set, with one exception. In 1943, she appeared in So Proudly We Hail, alongside Veronica Lake, a much younger star. When Goddard became friends with Lake instead of her, the 39-year-old Colbert resented the implication that she was too old and snubbed the woman from then on. Colbert went above and beyond to save Pressman's life. They were in Barbados at the time. The star commissioned a freaking passenger plane full of medical staff to pick him up and fly him back to California. Sadly though, it was too late. Pressman passed in February of 1968. The loss devastated her, but it didn't end there. In quick succession, after her husband, Colbert also lost her mother and brother. Colbert's reaction was surprising. These were brutal losses, but she also felt relieved that she no longer had family burdens. She used her newfound time to return to acting. Well, Colbert didn't like Frank Capra much, she definitely had different feelings about her handsome co-star in It Happened One Night. Years later, she made a scandalous revelation. Even though they were both married at the time, Colbert and Gable carried on a steamy affair while on set. Colbert was at her failing husband's bedside when she received a bizarre letter. It was a message from Verna Hall via her estate manager, and it contained an utterly chilling accusation. According to Hall, the dying pressman was somehow going to take Colbert down with him, slaying her so that they could be together forever. And Colbert's reaction to this unhinged news was not good. As soon as Colbert received the strange letter, she marched right over to Hall's property. With no muss or fuss, Colbert then yelled at Hall's maid to tell your mistress I will never see her or speak of her again for the rest of my life. Then, just to be sure she was 100% clear, Colbert sent back every gift Hall had ever given her. Unlike many of her contemporaries, Colbert was neither desperate to hold on to stardom nor a recluse in the last decades of her life. She outlasted her family, her husband, and many other old Hollywood stars. But the end does come for us all, even the magnificent Claudette Colbert. In 1996, Colbert passed at the age of 92. 
Don't forget, if you've enjoyed this story or stories alike, make sure to show some love by subscribing and liking this video. Stay tuned for some more informative and exciting stories like this one.